My name is Rainer Obeser from MindChat and I'm hosting today's session. And I have with me once again uh, Nick Duffel from Harport Consulting, our technology and consulting partner. And Nick will be sharing uh, lots of uh, valuable information about the new Excel import and export functionality of my measure 2020. Hello, Nick. It's so good to have you here again. Hello, Hello. Ryan. I'm happy to be here too. Thank you for the introduction. Um, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, everybody from uh, wherever you are. I hope you can all see my screen. You should be able to see the map with um, Excel import and export with my measure 2020 on it, hopefully. Um, just to reiterate the bit of the introduction that um, that Reiner gave. Um, this is for my manager for Windows. So it's, it's different or um, the features will be different than other my manager platforms. Um, and, and it does assume a bit of knowledge about Microsoft Excel. So um, it, most people I think these days um, working in information technology have, have had exposure to Microsoft Excel, but I won't be explaining anything about um, how Excel works. We'll just be talking about it as a utility. So what I want to try and do in this um, this session is to demonstrate the features, but in particular, um, think about the use cases for importing and exporting to Excel and when, when it creates value, when, when will be a good time to use it. Let's start with the, um, the use cases when you would use the Microsoft Excel integration. We'll, we'll try and get that. Um, in the right place before we start looking at the, the technical details. Because trees and spreadsheets, very different looking things. They, they've got um, different applications in business. Um, most people will be very comfortable looking at tables and spreadsheets. Um, certainly more people than are accustomed to looking at trees. And uh, they, um, they have very different uses in business. So if you were um, to, if you wanted to get data out of um, your maps into a table, into, into a spreadsheet, you, you could use the export function. Um, and that might be, as an example, might be creating a report from a project map. If you have a project map with lots of detailed task information in it, and you just want a, a status report with the tasks alone without all the other associated data, um, again, the Excel export will be a great way to do that. Um, you could use it to a certain extent to share information with people who don't have my manager or you feel might be uncomfortable looking at maps. But um, you would certainly lose some of the context and the, the surrounding information. Um, but if you just wanted to extract selected detail, you could use Excel for that because um, nobody is going to object to being given an Excel spreadsheet with information in it. And the other area that you could use it for is to carry out further analysis of numerical data. You might have collected information in your maps. It might be um, structured in one particular way. You might want to get it into a spreadsheet to be able to do other analyses, apply other formulas and, um, and other things that Excel is really good at. So that, again, the export will let you extract that filtered data out of your maps, put it into a spreadsheet, and then you can continue to work on it there. On the import side, we're talking about getting data back into my manager from Excel. Um, the, the first use would be just to visualize what you've got in Excel. Instead of looking at tables, it's often very, it's much easier to see things in context, see them in trees. So that will be one way to do, to use that. Um, building dashboards is really useful. So if you have a map that is um, a dashboard that gives you a status snapshot or something, then getting detailed information into your map to, uh, to give the, the evidence and the numbers behind your dashboard um, would be very helpful. And um, in particular, things like the Excel linker, which I'll only mention briefly, um, will let you pick out a single number or a few numbers out of one place in one spreadsheet and bring them into a map, and that can be really useful. The, the thing that the, the new import feature, which we're looking at today, is really good at is, is analyzing and processing data, because um, my manager over, over recent versions has become um, much more capable at 
processing information, not, not just collecting and organizing it, but actually manipulating it with the um, smart rules and the formulas. You can now do an awful lot more. And in particular, you can do things based on hierarchies, based on trees. It's very convenient to, uh, to do analyses based on that. So you can use the import from Excel to, to get tabular data into the map and then do um, calculations and analyses that might not be so easy in a spreadsheet. You can do them very quickly in my major and, and get a visual indication of that. And we'll have a look at exactly that um, later on in the import session. We'll show you how to get something out of a spreadsheet that is not obvious in the spreadsheet, but can be made clear in my manager. So th those are some of the use cases. And um, Brian Liner did this webinar earlier on today for um, another part of my manager's audience. So I'd be very pleased to hear his, uh, his views on that as well at the end. Let's start with um, an overview of what the parts of Excel integration with my manager are now. Um, in my manager 2020, we have the Excel linker, um, which was in previous versions of my manager. What this does is um, it can get a few cells out of a spreadsheet and put them in a topic. So th this topic here um, is, is one row taken out of a spreadsheet and uh, placed in the map where you can actually see it. So there's a link between this particular topic and those, those specific cells in a spreadsheet in a particular file. And if that spreadsheet were to be updated, and we, re, we refresh um, this, this um, business topic, it'll put new data in the topic. So th this is um, a great link between spreadsheets and, um, and a my major map. It's perfect for dashboard maps. Um, it's, it's effectively an import, but it's really synchronization. It synchronizes data in the map with what's in the spreadsheet. If you want to change that data, you edit it in this. You go to the original spreadsheet and edit it. You can desynchronize it to disconnect. And, and as I say there, you can pinpoint and get data out of spreadsheets. It doesn't do any manipulation. It just takes the cells as they are and displays them in a spreadsheet element inside the topic. So the Excel linker is still in place. That hasn't changed. What has changed is the Excel and, and CSV export. Um, CSV, for those who haven't, uh, are not familiar with that, is comma separated variable and it's a text file format um, where you can have e each row in the spreadsheet is a line in the in the file and each column is separated by commas so comma separated um, you can't have any um, style or, or graphical information in those cells but you can deal with text and numerical data and the advantage of csv is all spreadsheet programs can open CSV files. So if you create a CSV file, it can be opened by um, Excel or any of the other spreadsheet, pro open office or whatever they are, um, it can open those. But you can't save um, things like formulae or, or style or other multiple sheets or layouts or whatever um, back to those. It's only just the raw data. But um, the new Excel, adding in my measure replaces the previous CS export to CSV function. It also replaces um, the, the previous Excel connection. Um, but what it does differently is it, it writes directly to Excel files. Let's have a look at that over here in this diagram. <clears throat> this diagram here, we've got a my major desktop with a map in it up at the top and Excel desktop application. The Excel linker that we looked at earlier on talks directly to Microsoft Excel and synchronizes data into the into topics in the map. The new Excel add-in, which we're looking at this afternoon, um, imports and exports direct to Excel files. It doesn't need to talk directly to the Excel app desktop application. Um, it can also export to CSV files. It doesn't import from CSV, but it can export. And then you access these Excel files or CSV file from the Excel application. And although I've written desktop application here, that was really only to show the, the synchronization link for Excel linker. If you're using Office 365 in the cloud, you can um, import and export to Excel files um, using my manager without having Excel installed on your desktop. You, you can just access those Excel files 
um, with the, the web client in Office 365. So you, you're not required to have Excel desktop installed any longer for the import and export to work because the Excel add-in reads and writes native Excel files directly, which is a big help for people who are moved, working more and more online now. What's new in this, this um, Excel export is you have detailed control over what you export. You can choose precisely which um, elements of topic information you export and what order you export them in, which is really helpful. Um, it will also export to the CSV file format, as I mentioned, but um, if you do that, you can't export graphical things like icons. Um, just to make sure that you've got this, um, if you go to File, Options and Add-ins and check that the Excel add is, in, is enabled, then you'll have the commands. So File, Options, Add-ins, we should have, that. that's the Excel linker, the second one down that, that we talked about earlier on. And then the Excel add-in there, um, that add-in should be checked. Um, otherwise, you won't have the, the commands in the import and export menus and in the topic context menu. So if you think you're missing anything, just check that this add-in is enabled. On the import side, um, import from Excel is, is a new feature in my Magic 2020. And again, you get detailed control over what you can import and how it gets structured. Um, the, the, what you've got a lot more flexibility on how topics from, um, sorry, cells from Excel are mapped into topics in my measure on the import side. And again, that uses the same add-in. So the add-in that we just looked at, make sure you've got that enabled before you use that. So that's a quick overview of the, um, the places where my major integrates with Microsoft Excel. So let's, um, let's go ahead and look at the operation of the Excel um, export and import. If we start with the export side. The first question is how on earth do you convert a tree into a table? How are you going to take a hierarchical tree and actually turn it into tabular information? And the way it works is that every topic um, that you export becomes a row in your table. And the, the topic levels become columns. And the topic data is turned into columns as well. Let's have a look at an example over here. I've drawn out um, this side of the map, a little tree, which is um, what we're going to export. And then it shows you how that looks when you get it into um, a spreadsheet. So th this tree is, is a little organization chart for um, Acme services. Um, and we, they've got different um, offices in different countries. And they've got different departments in those offices and they've got people in those departments. And each, each person has a phone number and an email. So we want to get all of that somehow out into a spreadsheet because that would be really convenient to send around as a spreadsheet rather than a map. When we do the export, we start exporting from that, that um, top of the tree there. And that, that becomes what's called level zero. It creates a column called level zero in the, in the spreadsheet. So this, this is a picture of the exported spreadsheet. The next set of topics become level one and the next one become level two. And then the people themselves, the, the leaf nodes in the tree, map to level three. And then after that, it starts creating columns for the data attached to those topics. And we've chosen to export the, um, the, the property, which is um, the topic property, which is the phone number. So we've added a phone number as a topic property to each topic here and the email. So there's an email link. There's a link on each topic, which is the email address of that person. And th those two pieces of data become um, columns in the spreadsheet. And you can see the, um, the, the layout here, it's, it's exported the whole tree. We've asked it to export the whole tree and it exported it in an outline format, which means that um, it shows you all the parent topics for the leaf nodes. In fact, the, these um, ones at level three are, are the actual information that we wanted. They're the, the details for the people, but it exports a line um, for all the others. And that might be important because you might have properties or, or topics, um, topic data or other information 
on higher level topics in the map as we have here. So um, the marketing department in, in Acme Services has, it has its own email address. You can email marketing direct without, without saying who you want to speak to. So marketing has an email address too. So by exporting um, a row for every topic, however high it is in the tree, we then create spaces in these, these columns for the data to put information that, that, that comes from, put data that comes from high level topics in the tree. Now, um, that, that you might not want that, and there's, there's a way around that. You can filter the map before you export. But if you ex export the whole tree, then you can export in topic data, that is properties or task information or whatever as it might be, um, at all levels, and it'll create the entries in the columns at all levels. So that, that's an example of um, exporting from a tree to a table. And this, this particular layout that we've chosen is the outline layout. Um, if you want a pivot layout, you can also choose that, and that will fill in um, the names of the parent topics in every cell. So instead of all the empty cells we've got over on the left-hand side, it will repeat the, um, the names of the um, parent topics so that you can then use that to pivot inside Excel. It's got all the data there. So that, that's the logic of how, how it exports. Um, as I said, the topic data are turned into columns Excuse me, I've got an empty subtopic there. And um, as well as the task information and properties, you can ex also export the markers, um, which are the tags and icons. You can export relationships, you can export dependencies, um, you can export cost information. All the, all the data that you can find on a topic can be exported to a column in the, in the map, in the spreadsheet, excuse me. And I mentioned the two um, formats, the outline and the pivot table. The outline, the, only the first parent column is populated with text, but in the pivot table, all the parent topic text is shown in each view. And uh, we mentioned the CSV export earlier on. You can export to native Microsoft Excel or comma separated variable. You don't choose that when you do the export. Um, you choose a different command to export in the first place. So you choose either export to Excel or export to CSV. So that's that's how it does the conversion. Um, you can choose what you export though, and it's always a good idea to to think about um, filtering and to think about choosing what data you export rather than export the whole map and then clean it up in Excel afterwards, because you might give yourself more work than you realized in doing that. So having a think about what the, the recipient of the spreadsheet is going to need it for, how they're going to use it, um, you, you can reflect that in the configuration and the export that you do, you know, the filtering that you do. So the export observes topic filtering. You, you can filter, um, filter what you want to export. And you can either choose to export the whole map, um, where, and you do that by going to File to Export, Microsoft, File Export, Microsoft Excel. Or you can um, export trees at selected topics, or you can export selected topics only. And the, this one, selected topics only, is probably the most most common use case because this is where you would be wanting to export um, detailed information about all similar types of um, object in your map. For example, tasks um, in the map. So it doesn't it doesn't really care about the hierarchy. It's just going to export the selected topics. And to, to do that, to export selected topics only, instead of going to File Export and starting an export of the whole map, um, you would right click on a topic and do Send Topics To, and then Microsoft Excel. And that would send individual selected topics rather than the whole trees underneath them or the whole map to, to the Excel spreadsheet. So um, this, these export two places where you can start export. Um, I'll show you where the file export one is. File export Microsoft Excel. That will ex export the entire map um, or the, the filtered map with it, with the parents of the filtered topic. Or if you go, if you right click on a topic and go send topics to, and then Microsoft Excel that will export just the individual selected topics. So whatever you've got selected in the, in the map will go, go to the spreadsheet. And we'll, we'll have a look at that in a moment. 
So if we, um, when we do the export, we have the choice of either making a quick export, just it uses the defaults from the last export that you did, and, and you only have to choose the, the destination file. Or we can go through a custom export, which we'll go through now. We'll show you the, um, the options for that now. And in the custom export, you can define step by step all the things that you want to want to define. Let's um, let's go ahead and, and do an export so you can see that in operation. I've got here a, a project plan which um, for people who've been on the um, some of the webinars before would have seen before. This is um, a project plan for our, our client Acme services who are going to move to a new office. And um, what this is, it's a, it's a whole set of tasks which are linked with dependencies. They've got costs, they've got people assigned to them, they've got timescales, they've got dates, so whatever, everything you'd need um, for a project plan. And let's say we want to, to get this map out into a spreadsheet. And what we really want is just a list of tasks. So um, as you know, the, the big advantage of my manager is you can have much, much more than just task information in the project plan. You, you can put all your associated resources and links, ideas, things that haven't been decided yet, bits and pieces you don't haven't uh, determined what to do with. You can have all of that in a my major map. And within that somewhere, either mixed in or on its own, you can have the actual project plan, the task of what you're going to do. But if you're going to export um, a, a project report out of that, then you probably want to just take the task information out. You don't necessarily want to export to Excel all the other bits and pieces, background information, notes and observations and everything. You just want a, state, a status for the project from a task point of view. So what we can do here um, to, to get that just that information is go to the um, power filter. If we go to the power filter on this map, um, we can choose to to just pick up, if I enable that and re-enable that again, um, just pick out tasks that have got a progress icon on them because they, they are going to uniquely identify everything in the map that is a task and they'll ignore things that are, are information rather than tasks or parent topics or whatever they might be. We, ju we just want the task information. So if we select um, the any icon in the progress group there, and click show, it's going to select all those topics and hide everything else. So what we have in view now, the, the, um, the map is filtered, as you can see at the bottom left. Um, th this map is now ready to do an export. And we right click on any topic and do send topics to the Microsoft Excel. And this brings up the, the new um, export wizard for the, for the Excel export settings. And we've now got a number of pages that we can step through to, to define this export here. I mentioned quick export before. I'm, I'm going to take you through the custom export. If you, if you leave it set to quick export and click export, it'll jump straight to the end where you choose the, the destination file. If we go custom export, select that, and then step through this, this wizard with a next, you can choose at each stage um, what you actually export. The first choice is whether to include icons or not. Um, if, if you're exporting to Excel, it will send the image of the icon. If you export to CSV, it will send the text name of the icon. So here, um, I've, you can either send all icons or you can exclude them all, or you can just include icons from particular groups. So enables one particular group there. Um, if you've got any tags in the map, tag markers, they can be exported as a column. Um, task information. Now, by default, it'll, it will include all task information. But what I've done here is I've set it to include only selected task information, and I've switched off dependencies. And the reason for doing that is that um, it will create a column um, for a, the maximum number of dependencies in the map. So if you have a task, one task in the map that's got four dependencies connected to it, you'll get four dependency columns in the spreadsheet. And if you've got quite a complicated project, that can make the spreadsheet quite big. So for the purposes of our status report, I've switched off dependencies. Um, if, you, if you switch dependencies on, it shows you the type of the dependency and the, the other tasks that it's linked to. 
but you do you can get quite a, a wide spreadsheet, lots of columns if you have um, a complex project map there. Um, I'll include all properties. I don't think I've got any properties in this this particular map, but if you've got topic properties, um, you can include those, or you can include selected ones that are used in the map. Map elements lets you choose um, what type of um, object in the map you want to export. Now, if if you're exporting selected topics, then floating topics and callouts don't really apply. If you're exporting the whole map, you can choose whether to include floating topics and callout topics in the map there. Um, and you can switch on the export of relationships and other topic data, the hyperlink and the notes and any comments as well there. So you've got lots of options there. And then the last thing in the um, content selection, you can choose what order you want the columns. So you, you can set up the spreadsheets for the columns in the right order and you just um, drag an element and, and put it in the right order to get the, the export order. Now we can choose whether we do an outline or a pivot export. We explained the difference between the two and that, that's shown graphically there as well. And lastly, we can we can choose whether to include the formatting out of the map. The, uh, the theme formatting and the custom formatting, and it will apply the, the topic formatting to the to the rows and cells that it exports. So I'll, I'll leave that set as it is. Um, we can ask it to include a, a header record as well. So it'll create a header row at the top um, with the names of the, the columns in it. Now, um, when it's exporting topics, it just it just heads those level one, level two, level three, and so on. They might actually have a different meaning, but um, but you'd have to add that data to the spreadsheet afterwards. When it's exporting um, topic data like start date or resources, it will actually put the correct heading on. It'll give you a heading that reflects what that data is. And then we're ready to export. And the last step is to choose the um, the export file name. So you can either overwrite one that's um, already been exported or create a new version. Um, if you if you overwrite an existing one, make sure you close the close it first. You haven't got it open, otherwise you get an error when you do the export. So you can't overwrite a file that's already open. So this is our exported spreadsheet. And um, what what we've done with that. Um, project map is extract all the topics that are tasks, actual tasks, and then we've created um, columns for all this data for each task. So you, you can't see any of the structure of the project in this. Um, it doesn't give you any of the, the hierarchy. It, I mean, we haven't exported the dependencies. We switched that off as well for the sake of clarity for this export. But what this does give you is it gives you all the numerical data and status data. And you could now, if you wanted to, you could perform more analysis on this. You could you could break things down, start running totals in your spreadsheet. This could be the basis of um, a, an anal analytic report. I'll just give you a summary of that. So that's um, that, without looking at a lot more here, we've got all the um, task related information and the total cost information and resource cost information. So it's uh, exported all of that, um, written it as an Excel spreadsheet. We've opened it in the desktop application here, but you could just as easily open it in the web application. So that, that's the export side. Um, <clears throat> let's just have a quick look at some, some export tips before we moving on to the um, import. If you have fairly shallow maps and consistent structure, then you'll be well placed to export, including the, the parents and the hierarchy. You, you could create a, a fairly readable export. If, if your map is very asymmetrical, if you've got um, information at all different types of level, then the, an Excel spreadsheet because export, because it goes into columns, might be pretty hard to understand, might be hard to read. So if you're planning on exporting the hierarchy, exporting the whole map and showing parent topics, then try and get your map very consistent and at the same type of information at the same level. Um, but use map filtering to, to export, to control what you actually get exported. Um, if you want to use something other than Excel, then export to CSV instead of to Excel. So then you can open that with, with any other spreadsheet software or um, there's many other types of program that will open um, that. Just a note here that at the moment um, you can't save and reuse 
um, a custom configuration on export. So you can't save, create a, a configuration for export and then save that and apply it to a different map. Um, the custom export is remembered in the map. So once you set up a custom export, you can repeat it with a quick export, but you can't use that same configuration on another map. So that, that's um, a quick look at the export. Let's have a, a look now at the import feature in the Excel linker. And again, we have the same same question, how do we convert a table back into a tree? Um, and there's a few rules and a few expectations, but we've created a little diagram here so you can see how we get from um, information in a table in a grid and convert that into a hierarchy. And th this is the um, what what the Americans call a secret source. It's this is the um, where my magic can bring real value to the analysis of tabular data, and I'll point that out in a second. Um, if we have a, a simple spreadsheet here, then the columns um, become topics. They become topic levels. And you can then add further data out of the columns and attach it to topics as properties or as notes. So in our example here, what, what this spreadsheet is, it's um, a little um, stock list for a metal stockist, what type of um, stock they, they keep and what, what material it's made of, what size it is and the price per meter or whatever it is. So uh, it's a little um, table of different types of metal that you can buy from this stockist. And we've exported that to, to a map. And column A, which is the product name, becomes the first level. And what my measure does is it, it groups together all the rows that have the same column A. So we've got three instances of threaded rod in column A here. My manager has um, joined all those together and just made a single parent. And then it splits out into um, the material. We've, we've done a little swap here. We've swapped over columns B and C. So column C becomes the next level of topic. And you can see that there's um, under threaded rod, we've got two different types of material mild steel and stainless. So my major has created parents for each of those. But the, the two items that are threaded rod and mild steel is joined together with a common parent. And, and this is where um, import from Excel spreadsheets into my major becomes really powerful because you can get my major to group things together under common parents. You can define what order those parents are in, and then you can apply analyses to those. So you can apply formulae, you can apply um, roll-ups to those. Um, you can do things pretty quickly in my measure that are quite hard to do in the spreadsheet. So we've got the first three columns, um, the, the product, the size, and material have become topics. So the, the, um, the product type, the material, and then the, the product itself. And then the last column D, which was a price per meter, we've actually mapped into a, a topic property here. So the, the data in that, in column D, we've said, um, don't create a new topic with that, add it to a, a topic we'd already created, but put in it as a topic property. So you can get um, a, a spreadsheet with a large number of columns, some of those you might want to map into a structure to create a tree. Some of the others you can map into either topic properties or topic notes. You, you can get the data from the spreadsheet and attach it to those topics. So what we've created here out of columns B and D, we've created a topic with um, the column B text is the name of the topic and the um, topic property we call price per meter that just come from the header row here um, take contains that data so we've now started to build topics that um, represent an object and we are able to to bring um, more detailed data into them this does assume that um, when you do an import the rows are all the same they're the same type they've got the same kind of information in the same columns um, and having said that, you can do it the other way around. You can import where the headers headers are a column, and the uh, and the the rows are actually the uh, sorry the columns are the instances. So you can do it a uh, 90 degree swap around, and you can bring columns in either as levels in a tree, or you can bring them in as topics at a 
property that topic properties at a level or topic notes at a level. So when you when you do an import, um, there's a feature called the Excel Data Mapper, and although the the add-in is called the um, Excel Add-in, the function inside my manager is called the Excel Data Mapper, and you'll find that um, in in the Advanced tab. So there's the Excel Data Mapper there. You can launch it from there, or you'll find it in File Import. Um, import using Excel Data Mapper, and I would recommend using the import um, menu there because you can select a topic and then start a new import on that. Let's um, before we go through this configuration, let's show you an example spreadsheet, an example import, because it's often easier to understand um, what what it actually does if we look at an example. I've got a, um, a spreadsheet attached to this topic, which um, I'm proud to say I stole from from an organisation called Highland Council here in Scotland in the UK. And the, the telecom provider, British Telecom, is planning on closing a lot of public phone boxes across Scotland. And they've, they've provided a list of all the places where they think they, they're going to close that phone box. And we've got this as a spreadsheet. And in the in the spreadsheet, um, each row is is a public phone box that the British Telecom are planning to close, and it gives us some information about each of those. Um, it gives us their internal reference number. It says which community council, which, which local um, community organisation are responsible for that that part of the uh, part of the district, um, the phone number of the post box, where it is, its address, and, and its postcode and how many calls have been made from it in the last 12 months. So what they're looking for is phone boxes with, with very few calls. They're looking for the, the bottom performers in that. Um, they, they're required to tell the public when they plan to close a phone box. And lastly, we've got a ward number, which is the Highland Council district area. So we've got um, quite a bit of detail here, and we could spend some time um, sorting and, and filtering in Excel to try and work out what's going on and where, where the uh, you know, who's going to be most affected by this. Um, but we could do it in my measure as well, which is, which is what we've done here. So I'll close this spreadsheet again here, and we'll have a look at an import. So what um, what I've done in the first import, and we'll step through this in a moment, is um, I've imported the community council first, and then for each line, for each phone box, I've imported the address as the as the topic text, and then added the phone number, the number of calls, and the ward number as, as topic properties. So um, we've been able to get all the important stuff out of this spreadsheet straight into topics in a map, and we, we might now choose to just focus on um, a few areas, you know, just to, to drill into um, places that are of particular interest to us. So th this import could be the basis of um, some other information analysis that we're doing or, or some other um, planning session or whatever it is we might want to do with this information. So that that's we're able to do that. And what I've done in the second import example, which I'll take you through if I can repeat it, um, is I've done an analysis here. And the, the, the question that I'm asking is, which of the council wards make the fewest calls from public phone boxes? So we've got a spreadsheet where all the phone boxes have, been, have got a council ward number against them. What we want to do is say in ward six, whatever that might be, um, we, well, or in any particular ward, which of the wards where the total number of all the phone boxes in that ward is the lowest? And if I rush to the end and tell you what I've done here is I've set up an import, which we'll go through just now, but I've also created a, a smart rule that highlights any any with the total call count of less than 10. So it's added up um, the, the number of calls in the last 12 months using a my major um, formula. And then we've applied a smart rule to that. And we're able to see really quickly 
with some highlighting. We've got three council wards with less than 10 calls from all their phone boxes. So that, that's the kind of um, an example of the kind of analysis that you can do very fast in a tree that might be a lot more work in the spreadsheet. But um, let, let's, let's recreate that so you can see the, the steps for doing that. So bear with me um, while I delve into technical demonstrations that can go wrong. So we've um, got import, create a new topic for an import here. We're going to go file, import, import using Excel data mapper. And what happens now is um, you get a, a task pane pop up on the right hand side. And this task pane is like a wizard. Um, it takes you a step at a time through the configuration for doing the import. And you can either create a new map from the import or you can um, create the import under the topic you've got selected in the map, which is what we'll do. So I've got a topic selected and that's going to be the route for our import. Then the next um, next thing I need to do is uh, where are my documents? Right, I've got a, this spreadsheet that we looked at five minutes ago, the proposed closures, um, a spreadsheet here. I'm going to open that spreadsheet. And when, when you open a spreadsheet in this import wizard, it, it, it goes and reads the spreadsheet already. So it knows what's in there and it can start to ask you pointed questions about which parts of that do you want and how do you want it formatted. So we, we selected the file um, and it's asking me which sheet I want to import. So if we had a spreadsheet with multiple sheets, I could choose other sheets. And it's asking if, if you want to export a particular um, cell range. Um, if you want to, if you know your spreadsheet and you know what the cell range is, you can type that in in a custom cell range, but you'd have to type it in sort of um, a, A3 to, to C22 or whatever it is, you'd have to look up the cell numbers for that. But uh, we're just going to import the whole spreadsheet here. Now, if I'd, if I'd done this import before and saved that import configuration as a preset, I could choose a preset file here. So if, I, if I'm going to do the same analysis on a set of spreadsheets, I can set it up once, save that import configuration and then select that preset. But uh, I haven't got this saved at the moment. So next it looks up um, to see if any of the rows are likely to be header rows and you can choose um, one of the rows as a header row. As I said earlier, you can do it um, the other way around. You can import on a column basis as well. So you might have your head headers in columns and, and uh, the individual entries in columns. But here we've got the, um, the headers as a row and it tells you what, what it's found in row one. So you can see that row one is actually the, the header text for those cells, so that, that's fine. And now we get to the, the most detailed bit, but this is, this is really where the power um, comes into it. This is where we are mapping from um, columns in our spreadsheet to topics and topic data in, in, the, in the map. Now I'm going to get rid of level three, I'm just going to work with two levels to start with. You can add, add levels and adding a level means adding another um, level of topics in the tree. But for each level, you can choose where it's going to get its text from. And we wanted to do that by council ward. So in that drop down, you can choose any of the columns in the spreadsheet and, um, and assign that as the topic text for an imported column, imported topic, excuse me. And then we don't want any, any other properties um, underneath that at this point. But if I go to the, um, to the options and switch on the advanced options, while I'm here, I'll mention this, this option here. The, the properties for um, numerical values, you can, you can automatic, get it to automatically create properties in topics when it finds what it thinks is a number value in a, in a column. And you can also turn on auto sum for numerical properties. And this will automatically put in um, the, the formula for summing up numerical values. And you can also switch on the advanced options on each level too. So I've enabled those. And I now get um, this little gear wheel next to the topic and this this option here duplicate duplicate values reference a single object that that's pretty tough to read actually that that's um, 
maybe that that'll be improved in a future future version of my measure. But what that is trying to tell tell you is that it will merge together um, objects that have the same text in that that column. So if all the entries that have the the same text, the same value in that particular column will all get joined together under the same parent topic. And that, that is the, um, for me, that's the most important part of the import. That's where the power comes from in the, the ability to turn um, tabular data into a tree. So I'm gonna leave that switched on. And then at level two, we actually want to pick out individual phone boxes. And the thing that will be unique um, about every phone box will be its address. So we, we take, import the address column into level two in the map. And now we want a bit of extra data on top of that. And um, so we click the plus and we can now add either properties or notes. We can import um, extra columns as either a property or a note. So if we say we'll import a property and we're going to import the number of calls in the last 12 months, which is in column F and, and put that in as, uh, as a property on the topic. And we already switched on the, the option for adding these up. And you can see that reflected here. There's a little um, epsilon sign there and we've got some enabled. So it's going to create a sum of these. But you can see we've got other options which you also find in the formulae. Um, you can do other, other numeric analyses on this data that you import here. And that, that's all we really need to do now. So we, we set up the, we've chosen a file, um, we've, we've chosen the, the, the sheet that we're going to use, we've chosen the header column and the range, and we've mapped columns into um, topic levels and um, properties on the topic. So if I now press ply, it's going to make a fool out of me or not. It's reading that spreadsheet and creating a tree, which we hope is going to show the total number of calls by council ward, which was the um, let me just reduce that for a moment to see. The first level, the topic text is the council ward number, and it's automatically created um, a property called sum, which is the, the sum of the number of calls in the last 12 months, which is the total of um, the, the number of calls in the last 12 months property in all the subtopics. Each subtopic is one phone box and we're using its address as a topic text. So we can see in Ward 6, um, it, there's a total of 434 calls made. And we already set up um, a smart rule. We already set up a smart rule here um, called too few calls. And what this smart rule does is it looks at the uh, topic property and the topic property chosen is the sum of the number of calls in the last 12 months. If it's less than or equal to 10, then we're going to apply um, this, this tan fill color to the topic. So you can say it stands out from the other. So that, that smart rule is operational straight away. Now, um, a reason to use smart rules rather than um, going through manually and, and marking stuff up is that if you re-import again, you will lose anything, any changes that you made to this tree. So if you if you went through this tree, um, marked up some stuff by hand and said, really need to look in this area, you know, this, 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 this particular district is a problem for us, we need to do a bit more thinking. If you were to then re-import that spreadsheet into the same, and refresh that import in the same place in the map, you would lose any customization you'd made. But if, if that customization is made using smart rules, then that'll get reapplied straight away. So that, that's, um, that's a very quick look at using import, configuring import with the Excel data mapper and using smart rules to, um, to do some automatic mapping, uh, markup, excuse me, and um, enabling some automatic calculation of the imported data there. So let's just um, wrap up the import section on some usage tips. Um, I just mentioned that any changes you make will get overwritten if you refresh that import. So um, Try and, try and avoid using anything except smart rules, really, if you want to um, dynamically update anything. Um, the, the import configuration is remembered on the import topic. It gets a little icon there, and you can re refresh that import. You can draw that data in again. So if the spreadsheet is updated, you can repeat that import. Um, you can also save that import configuration um, as, a, as a file, and you can reapply that in other maps and to other spreadsheets. 
um, it's a good idea to format the the table columns. Um, you could use the the cell formatting function in, in Excel, because um, if you format it to a known data type, and my magic can cope with that, numbers or dates or, or text, um, it will appropriately create the, the right topic properties, topic, to topic property types when it does the import. Um, be aware that numerical data gets summed up by default, but that might not work for everything. So if, if some of your numerical data is phone numbers, um, a sum of all the phone numbers isn't going to be very useful. So just double check whether that's what you actually want. Um, if you want to insert insert a level rather than just add an extra level, um, you can add a level in the Excel data mapper. And then there's these blue um, up and down arrows next to the levels. So you can move them up. So if you want to insert a level before level one, add one at the end, and then use the the arrows to move it up to reorder them. And that that's a, a really powerful way to um, restructure the import until you're starting to get the analysis that you really want and need. Um, you can import the same map multiple times as we have in in this map, but um, but use the the file um, import import um, using Excel data mapper there rather than using the data mapper button in the um, in the, the command bar there. Um, if you're importing property values, uh, they don't get indexed in the topic index. It, you, can in, you can index other types of stuff, but um, the values of properties aren't indexed. But you can either use smart rules or the power filter to, to um, find and manipulate um, properties that you import. So if you if you import um, a whole bunch of topics with lots of different values in, in a particular property, um, you can use the, the power filter properties tab here. You can choose a property name um, called in the last 12 months, and you can then choose a comparison. So you could say, um, show me everything in the map, you know, every area that's made more than 100 calls. You, you could use the power filter very quickly um, to pinpoint data that's embedded in the mapping topic properties there. So that, that brings us to the end of the, um, the import feature. So we've looked at export and import. Um, just wrap up with a couple of points. The import and export are not symmetrical. Um, they're, they're not designed so that you can export a map to a spreadsheet and then re-import it again perfectly. They're, they're analytical tools and reporting tools rather than tools for um, turning a map into a spreadsheet and back again. That, that's not what it's designed to do. Um, you can use the export to, to create data-rich reports out of maps, extracting um, selected data out, out of lots of different places and putting in a very um, well-formatted table. And you can use the data mapper for the import to, to do fantastic analyses on, on information in tables and see things graphically, create, create graphical structures that are hard to see in the spreadsheet and analyses that are difficult to do in the spreadsheet as well. So um, I would say the, the Excel data mapper is a, is a brilliant tool for um, analyzing and working with data, but doing it graphically. That brings us to the end. So how are we doing for questions then, Rainer? Wow, this was really a whole lot of information. Thank you so much, Nick. I think it really helped to to make us understand how powerful and useful this can be. Thank you for being with us and uh, finding the time to listening to this. And we, Nick, myself, uh, and the rest of the team, uh, yeah, is hoping to see you once again in the next year for our uh, other planned webinars in the future. Thank you very much, Nick. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thanks. I my, add my thanks to everyone who's uh, given an hour today. Customer, you know it would be great. The quarter's coming to a close, so please don't hesitate. Place your order right away.